I want to start by thanking everyone for the amazing feedback that I got uh, for the first video. Uh, thank you so much for the encouragement. I especially want to thank my uh, family uh, from all over the world who uh, watched it and enjoyed it. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, it's obviously a little bit challenging to kind of make a video for everyone. You know, so many people that are on different planes of existence. Uh, so it's hard to try to uh, make something that satisfies everyone. But, uh, you know, of course, we'll, we'll do our best. Um, also want to uh, mention that things are uh, pretty much the same over here. Uh, we're still on lockdown. They are saying maybe they're going to uh, start having police patrol and make sure that uh, people aren't out of the house when they shouldn't be. Uh, obviously, that's starting to get to a kind of dystopian, bizarre future. Uh, but quite frankly, I'd much rather be in uh, Israel here than anywhere else if that's the kind of world we're going to live in. In any event, uh, I think one of the things that uh, we're all struggling with is this uh, kind of mix of negative and positive information. Um, it's really difficult to constantly be looking at the news and hearing about death and gloom and uh, people getting sick. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's inevitable. I already know a few people um, that are sick, that are in the hospital, they should have a refuah shalema. But the fear in many places is uh, tangible. And uh, we really kind of have to be vigilant and we have to be careful about it. But on the other hand, uh, if we're living in fear and we're all locked up, uh, you know, some experts feel that the depression and the anxiety and the mental and emotional damage could be worse than actually having the coronavirus. So we have to be very careful in terms of what kind of information we're intaking and how to make a proper balance, um, like a balanced diet of that information. So on the one hand, it's important to know what we should be doing, know what we should not be doing, and again, to be vigilant. On the other hand, it's really important to read things that uh, fortify us, that encourage us, of course, to speak to people who are positive, speak to people that uh, are encouraging and lifting us up. And uh, that's really of core importance, especially for the children. A lot of us don't recognize, don't realize how the children are processing this. And a lot of them may be very afraid, but don't really know how to share that information. So it's really important to listen to the kids and to be super, super patient with them. I know personally how difficult that is, but we don't know how much anxiety and fear they're dealing with. And, uh, you know, our kids asked us the other day, like, what happens if, God forbid, you and mommy get sick? You know, what are we going to do? He's going to take care of us. And I'm sure that all the children are, are, are thinking about that. So we have to be super sensitive and uh, make sure that on the one hand, we're telling people to be careful. On the other hand, sending positive messages and saying how uh, we are going to take care of everyone, so on and so forth. One of the reasons that uh, people are down is that their entire uh, life schedule has kind of been uh, uprooted. Um, in a religious sense, a lot of people are very sad that they can no longer go to Minyan to go to shul. Uh, we have a beautiful thing going on here that we have a Minyan uh, via our balconies and our backyards. So everyone can see each other, but we are uh, fully isolated from each other. And we had a beautiful Kabbalat Shabbat, which could be heard around the neighborhood. It was actually quite meaningful. And I want to thank my neighbors for that. Um, but in any event, so um, how do we process? Like, what does God want from us? Like, why would he not want us to go to shul and go to Minyan? There's a beautiful story about the Hasidic rabbis, Rabbi Limelech of Lizansk and Rabbi Zusha of Hanipol. They were two uh, brothers, two brothers, you know, sorry. And there were two brothers that basically uh, they would go on self-imposed exiles uh, in order to uh, learn about themselves, learn about people, so on and so forth. And uh, what happened was is that they got thrown in a, I believe it was a Russian jail. And uh, that was not the greatest place to be, I guess, in 19th century. Um, and uh, the two brothers were there and they were the, obviously the only Jews surrounded by various characters and ruffians. And uh, Rav Zusha was very, very sad. So Rav Elimelech asked him, Rav Zusha, why are you so sad? I mean, I know we're in jail, so on and so forth, but let's, let's, you know, let's try to make the best of it. So Rav Zusha pointed to the bucket in the middle of the prison cell, 
which was obviously the bucket which was used for refuse and human waste, and pointed out to his brother of Elimelech that even though it's time to pray shacharit, we will not be able to pray, we will not be able to put on tefillin, because we know that the halacha is that one may not pray uh, in the place of uh, refuse or human waste. So Rebbe Elimelech turned to his brother, who was very sad, and he said, Rebbe Elimelech, who told you you can't pray? Whose will are you following that you can't pray? And Rev Zusha answered, of course, it's we're following the halacha, we're following the law, that we're not allowed to pray. So he says, if you're, you're following the law, then you're doing God's will. So at the end of the day, you know, what are you so upset about? We do God's will if we daven, and now it's God's will that we don't daven right now. And at that, Rav Zusha was so happy that he started dancing and he started singing. And before you know it, Rav Elimelech and Rav Zusha are having this dance party in the middle of a Russian dungeon. And the tune was catchy. And before you know it, the other prisoners are dancing and they're all dancing around the bucket and everyone's having a great time. And before you know it, the uh, prison uh, warden, who probably wasn't the most cheerful person, um, he hears like, People singing and dancing. He's like, what, what are we doing here? What's going on? He runs down. There's like smoke coming out of his ears and, and he's about to explode. And uh, basically he asks the guard, what is going on here? And the guard says, look, I don't know exactly what's going on. But all I know, it is, has to do with those two crazy Jews and the bucket in the middle of the cell. So uh, the warden says, all right, I've had enough of this. He walks in and all of a sudden everything stops. It's one of those moments where like everything just stops and uh, basically, the warden goes in, he grabs a bucket, and he says, this is what this is all about. I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take this away. And he takes the bucket out of the cell. At which point, Rebbe Lamelech turns to Rav Zusha and says, no, all right, now we can pray shacharit. So it's an amusing story. I heard at the Chabad house uh, many years ago. And I think, I think uh, Aaron Kadish and uh, Dove and Mendy were all there. It was a guest speaker. I forgot his name. Very uh, comedic, the Chabad house in Tinek. But in any event, the lesson I think is that, uh, you know, we find ourselves in many different situations in life. And sometimes we don't have control over those situations. But we have to do the best that we have given what the, cir- the circumstances are. And so too right now, we are in a situation where we're moving into uncharted territory. We don't know what will be. We don't know what will happen. At this point, I want to introduce the book review. This is a wonderful book called Everyone's Entitled to My Opinion, uh, The Wisdom and Wit of Rabbi David Orlovsky. Rabbi Orlovsky is a very well-known uh, speaker. Uh, he has a beautiful ability to combine humor with real, real deep messages. Um, he tells the story of how he was on a speaking tour and all of a sudden uh, his stomach started hurting and he thought he had gas. And before you know it, he was rushed to the hospital and they told him he had to have his uh, uh, his gallbladder taken out. And he's saying, look, I'm in the middle of a speaking tour. You know, will I be able to speak to bar? And the doctor is like, look, you don't you don't get major organs pulled out of you and then you just go back to normal right away. And uh, obviously there's more to the story, but, you know, for us, we are going through some really crazy times right now. We can't expect everything to just go back to normal. We can't expect to just continue as normal. Life is changing very rapidly around us. And when this happens, we need to learn to adjust and we need to accept that things aren't going to be the way they were. And in tandem with that, I'd like to introduce what uh, we're watching with the kids now. We have finished the Seven Worlds Seven uh, Seven uh, Worlds video by David Attenborough. We have now moved to Planet Earth Two, uh, which is also available, you know, on uh, uh, Amazon Prime. I'm not getting any, you know, money for that or anything like that. But at the end of the day, we see that in the animal world, the animal kingdom adjusts and uh, it it changes based on the realities that occur on the ground. And so too, there's much that we can learn about it. Um, Moving on to another subject, many people were shocked that I did not mention Bitcoin in my last uh, talk. Um, So here it is, I'm saying Bitcoin. I'm just gonna say that uh, right now, nobody knows what direction this is going in. It could skyrocket and be safer than some fiat currencies given the state of some governments. Uh, it could go to nothing because at the end of the day, it doesn't necessarily have intrinsic value. 
Uh, I'm holding on to my Bitcoin. I'm not panic selling it. If it goes under 4,000, I'm going to buy some more. I happen to think that uh, the technology behind it is worth something. Um, but I would advise you, of course, to do your own research. Um, in any event, I want everyone to uh, know that we're thinking about you to stay safe and uh, do your best to remain cheerful, to remain in a positive state of mind. There are times that we will be sad. There are times that we have to accept the feelings of fear and not pretend that we're not afraid and not pretend that we're not going through a difficult situation. But when we acknowledge those feelings and uh, we accept them, and then we're able to move on and uh, hopefully do the best that we can. Thank you again. Really appreciate your time and all the best. Sorry that we went beyond the 10 minutes, uh, 1049. But uh, we'll do my I'll do my best to cut it shorter next time. Thanks again. Bye bye.